welcome to a new episode of Sex Ed with Tara. This week, as requested by you guys, we're gonna talk about sexual piercings, how piercings can enhance sex, whether or not certain genital piercings are just for show or if they actually make sex more pleasurable, my personal experiences with piercings, and we're gonna differentiate between the different types of genital piercings and their colloquial or slang names. When you think of sex and piercings, you might think of a Prince Albert or a clit piercing, but there are probably a lot of things about both of those piercings you know nothing about. Like the fact that piercing your actual clit is very, very rare and very, very dangerous. And not only are we gonna talk about pierced genitals, we're also gonna talk about nipples, the tongue, and how they can play a part in sexual stimulation. As always, guys, I want you to post in the comments and let me know if you guys are interested in any other topic. I want you guys to pick the topics of sex ed because I want you guys to be informed on things you actually wanna know about. As with most of my content, it's kind of fan-driven. So as you're watching this video, hopefully it informs you and hopefully you think of a good topic for next time. Let's do it. So let's first talk about the tongue ring. I do have one, yes. Is the tongue ring just for show, or does it actually enhance kissing and oral sex? Personally, I think it's a case-by-case -case basis. Not everyone gets a tongue ring for sexual satisfaction. As with all piercings and body modifications, you do it because you like the way it looks, mainly. But I do feel like kissing someone with a tongue ring is interesting, and performing oral sex with a tongue ring is definitely more fun. Of course, these are just my personal opinions. And I do enjoy oral sex when it's performed on me more if the person has a tongue ring. It's basically just like putting a stud there that adds extra pressure to the certain points where you're licking or sucking, like underneath the cock on the frenulum, or the clitoris, which just adds for extra pleasure. But is it like a huge step up in sex? No, not really. Maybe it is for some people, but for me it's not like a huge deal, it's just kind of an extra little perk. And yeah, tongue rings do have that connotation that if a guy has it, he's probably into pussy licking, and if a girl has it, she's probably a quote unquote slut that likes to suck dick. But it's really not that big of a deal, and it can totally just be for the looks. Another place that a lot of people get pierced that may or may not have an effect on sexual pleasure is the nipples. And yeah, both men and women get nipple piercings. Could be one nipple, both nipples. It can increase or decrease sensitivity based on the person, but mainly it's just something fun to play with and look at. Again, as with most piercings, especially ones that aren't on the genitalia itself, the main appeal to getting them is aesthetic and not necessarily sex derived. Of course, there are exceptions to every rule. As with both tongue and nipple piercings, you can get multiple piercings, you can get them vertical or horizontal, you can get them in different places in your tongue, if we're going for the tongue piercing. You can wear a loop, you can wear a barbell, it's all up to you. And they do make vibrating barbells for oral sex, which are way too big to wear all the time, so I've never tried one, because I don't like changing out my piercings. All right, now that we've gotten those out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into genital piercings, because there are a lot for both men and women, because it's pretty interesting and is way more vast of a topic than I thought it would be when I started reading up on it and researching it. And for all this stuff, my references will be in the description, so go ahead and check those out if you wanna read more. So the age-old question is, does it benefit men or women more sexually? Well, studies show that it actually is more pleasurable for women, whether it's them that have the piercing or their partner that has the piercing. It's thought that this fact is maybe derived from the fact that sex for women is often more emotional and mental than for men, so if they feel sexy, or if they feel like they have something extra stimulating them, it will actually stimulate them more. But another thought, and mainly my thought, is the fact that women have a harder time getting off in the first place. So anything helps, basically. If you have a clitoral hood piercing that's rubbing on your clit while you're getting fucked, that's gonna be a benefit. But of course, as always, this is case by case. And if you're a girl, your boyfriend can enjoy it more than you because maybe they just don't do it for you. All right, let's start on the male piercings. And we'll start with the most popular one first, the Prince Albert. So if you don't know what a Prince Albert is, it is going in underneath the penis through the urethra, the place where you pee, and out the pee hole. It's kind of like a little hook thing on the bottom of your penis. You can wear all different kinds of jewelry in here, barbells, rings, what have you. Pretty much anything fits it anatomically. Some women like it, some men like it. It all depends on preference. A common thought is that Prince Albert's or any piercing on the penis is gonna give you as a man more of a chance to hit your girl's G-spot or whatever spot she enjoys most in sex, therefore making her come more easily. But some partners have reported that it's also really annoying, painful, again, case by case. That brings us next to frenulum piercings or Jacob's Ladder, which is a bunch of frenulum piercings. If you guys don't know what a frenulum is, it is the extra skin underneath your penis. The skin that kind of goes up from the penis and attaches to your head if you're not circumcised. You can also have a frenulum if you are circumcised. It just depends on how the job was done. So you basically pierce the skin underneath your dick, just like straight through. Not through the dick, just through the skin. It's more of a superficial thing. This is definitely more aesthetic for the man, more for the girl. So Jacob's Ladder is having a bunch of frenulum piercings on the bottom of your dick. Kind of creating a little frenulum ladder. Adorable. And then there's a piercing that goes directly through the head of the penis all the way through, either vertically or horizontally. Vertically is called apodravia, and horizontally is called ampelong. I just found out the names for these today. Anyway, these are generally more painful for men, initially when you get the piercing done, but not painful afterwards. And they are reported to give more pleasure to your partner. And these piercings are more restricted in what kind of jewelry you can wear. Then 
we have guich piercings, which is basically just piercing the space between your balls and your anus, which I call chode. Some people call gooch and other people call taint. Depends on where you heard the word first or where you look it up. This place is an erogenous zone for men, so it can give men extra sexual pleasure, despite it looking completely aesthetic and not like it would actually do anything. And the last male piercing we're gonna talk about today is the hafta piercing, piercing anywhere on your scrotum. This also may sound like it's purely aesthetic, but once your piercing is fully healed, you can add some weights to it. Sounds painful, I know, but it can prolong your orgasm depending on your anatomy, which is pretty interesting. Attaching a small weight to your balls, who to thunk? All right, moving on to female piercings. I personally have a clitoral hood piercing, so today we're gonna start with those. You can do it vertically, like this, or horizontally, like this. Before I got mine done, I actually thought they pierced the clitoris, which is basically like piercing the head of your penis for a guy, but the nerve bundlings are so much smaller because the member is so much smaller that that can be very damaging and very scary, so it's very rare that someone will pierce their actual clitoris. In fact, the place that I went to wouldn't even do it. Permanent nerve damage, temporary nerve damage, no thank you, I like to come. So if you guys didn't know, clits do have hoods, kind of like penises have foreskin. The only difference is in the Western world, we leave girls' clitorises hooded. Don't know why taking off our foreskin is mutilation, but taking off yours is okay, if not a tradition. But that's a discussion for a different video. So anyway, what you do is you pierce the skin above the clitoris. Vertically is said to feel more stimulating because it's laying right on top of the clitoris rather than just grazing the top by going horizontally. But I chose to go horizontal because I felt that it looks better and I felt that I could move it around more. And it is definitely fun with masturbation. There was a chance that I would have overstimulation, which means that I would just be coming out of nowhere, and that was something that I was kind of hoping for, but it's just not a reality. What is kind of cool is that the hood skin does kind of mesh into the other skin down there on my vagina, and so when someone inserts a penis into me, especially if it's forcefully, it does tug on that skin, and therefore pulls the piercing on my clitoris, so it does feel good, and that's definitely a plus. The next piercing we're gonna talk about is called a Christina piercing. This is like 100% aesthetic, and it's basically just piercing the skin above the clitoris in the clitoral hood, so it's not actually touching the clitoris. It's basically just like bejazzling your JJ to make it pretty, which is fine. I just like a little pleasure with my pain, you know? Next thing we have is the labia piercing. So the labia is like the meat curtains, basically. The two little pieces of skin that hang down from your vagina that are more or less visible depending on your anatomy. Mine aren't very visible, but you can like dig in there and find them. And some people get those pierced. They either pierce them together, they pierce one by one, or they just pierce one side. Unless it's mental, these are almost 100% aesthetic and have nothing to do with sexual pleasure other than just feeling like you got a sexy vagina. In my experience, genital piercings take a while to heal, longer for men than women. Some male piercings can actually take up to six months to heal, and during that healing process, you should abstain from sex or be very careful when you have sex. I always take the latter. Anytime I get a surgery or have anything done, when they say no physical exertion, no sex for two weeks, that means I'm a starfish in bed for two weeks or I'm gonna have fun giving a lot of blowjobs. It does not mean no sex for two weeks. Sorry, doctor. One thing that I do feel like is a con with genital piercings is that you do have to be careful when you're having sex, which means rough sex might be harder to do or a no-no altogether. You don't want to rip anything, tear anything, get anything lost inside of you, all of which can be very painful and very unfortunate. I have had sex with a guy with a frenulum piercing before and it didn't really help the sex because the frenulum piercing was so small, but I've never tried sex with anything like a Prince Albert, which I think would be kind of interesting, especially if you had like a bigger piece of jewelry in there. But I do condone and support the use of piercings and jewelry in sex. It's kind of like an extra sex toy or at least it's aesthetically pleasing. And I enjoy licking a pierced pussy. It's fun to have something to clang my tongue ring on. Kissing someone with a tongue ring is fun, although I've never kissed the person with a tongue ring that I kissed when I had my tongue ring. I don't know if they can get latched or something if he has a loop and I have a barbell. But as with every experience, it varies. It's up to your anatomy, your sexual preferences, your experiences, how rough or slow you go, how well your piercing was done, how large the piercing is, and there's basically no right or wrong answer. So just be careful with it, keep an open mind, and experiment. My go-to pieces of advice for all sexual acts. And of course, stay safe. If your boyfriend decided to put a barbell in that has like a poker on the end of it, make sure you're careful with condoms, you know, common sense type things. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I hope it was informative for you. If I left anything out, please post it in the comments. I know quite a bit about piercings, I've had quite a few in my life, but at the same time, I haven't delved as deep into the subculture of piercings and how they can be used for sex. So if you have any additional information or experiences, please post them in the comments, I'd love to hear them. I love you guys so much and I hope you guys have a wonderful time fucking people with piercings or getting your own piercings. I've been thinking about nipple piercings myself. Maybe after I get my boobs redone, I think they're kind of hot. And I think it would be more fun to not wear a bra when I have something poking out always, even if I don't have hard nipples. Or if I could just create perpetually hard nipples because that is like a dream of mine. I was kind of hoping that that would happen when I got my boobs done. Maybe a little bit of nerve damage in there. Come on, doc, just a little nerve damage. Just make them erect a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
of you guys. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. And as always, keep fucking pierced or unpierced. Mwah!